The modern Israeli wine industry has been at it for over a century, but only in recent years has it become a popular export product. Today we're here at Israel's largest winemaker, Balkan Winery. Not only are Barkan's vineyards located here at the site of their winery in Kibbutz Hulda, but also scattered over the best wine-growing regions in the country, in places like the Judean Hills, the Upper Galilee, and even the Mitzpeh Ramon. Over 8,000 tons of grapes are brought to the winery during harvest season. So, Barkan Winery is one of Israel's biggest wineries, producing lots and lots of wine okay. per year. Yes. How much land does it actually cover? We produced last year 15 million bottles. Wow. And you, we're today actually in the largest vineyard in the country. What kind of conditions do these grapes need in order to produce the best quality? Okay, it's something called terroir. Mm -hmm. So you have different slopes of vineyard, different irrigation systems, which is an Israeli invention. Mm -hmm. It's all via computer. Exactly. You basically drip irrigate. You give a small amount of water. If you're going to irrigate too much, you're going to get bloated grapes and you don't have the requirement of sugar. You need a very high sugar. But if you squeeze it, you see, you get the liquid. You get the skins inside. You need it also. Now, the liquid is clear. Yeah, it's very, very sweet. OK, it's like grape juice. During fermentation, we add yeast. Now what happens, the yeast converts all the sugar into alcohol, so you get a dry wine. So what distinguishes a red wine from a white? Simply the skin of the grapes used. If the skin remains during the fermentation process, it becomes red. Wines made without the skin of the grapes become white. So this you could make white wine? Also. Technically, yes, if you don't do the fermentation with the skins. Uh -huh. It's just very weird to drink Cabernet Sauvignon that's white, but technically it is possible. Okay. Barkhan offers a wide variety of different wines, ranging from affordable to premium and even super premium. All made with care, high quality grapes, and just the right conditions to yield award-winning wines. Quality should be all in all of wines. You can buy a bottle of $7, $10, or $85, but quality has to be good everywhere. And this is our priority. I think not everybody can do it. And to guarantee this quality consistently, we invest in two parts, that means in the vineyards. And the second thing is, in fact, we go, uh, we invest in technologies and we try always to improve the activity, the operation into the farm that you see in my back. So we're in the visitor center now. We're surrounded by huge amount of barrels. Even the shape of it is in the shape of a barrel. I don't know, Natalie, no, if you want to start counting, but there is over 6,000 uh, French and American oak barrels here. Wow. Uh, I see big barrels, yes, small barrels. Small barrels, different that sizes. Barrel here. That's like 30,000 liter each. You That's can make amazing. a jacuzzi if you want, you yeah. know. You can drown in that jacuzzi. <laughs> yes. The handmade French and American oak barrels provide very different aromas, as well as their toasting levels. Before they finish the oak barrels, they toast the inside of the barrel and that gives the different aromas you have in wine. Okay. So it's like when you have a steak, you have rare, medium, well done. With the toasting of oak barrels, you have LT, MT, HT. Light toast, medium toast, or heavy toast. And that imparts the flavors into the wine. The barrels have to be filled to capacity throughout the course of the aging process, or else the oxygen would cause it to spoil. So every two weeks, they go row for row. We're about 10 meters deep here and they need to make sure that the wine is topped up to uh, brim level. Is that why you can see that it's kind yes. of overflowing over Yes, so that's why it, sometimes it can overflow because sometimes you get a small piece of evaporation It's better for it. it to overflow than to... Then, yes, then have less wine. So are there any other methods of aging wine? Yeah, so we have the aging in oak barrels, okay. which are premium or super premium. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, entry-level wines or the younger wines, which are meant to be consumed and these are stainless steel tanks. The wine in the stainless steel tanks are aged for up to one year before being bottled and include such varieties as white wines and rosés. We also do brandy here. So the big tower that you see over there, that's a distillation tower for brandy. And then you have some uh, fermentation tanks. So these are obviously working only during the harvest, which is the end of July till the beginning of October or beginning of September. We're now in the bottling. 
Uh, they just came back from lunch, so slowly, slowly, it's gonna get very noisy here. There's three bottling lines here. So the one that's closest to us, the maximum capacity they can fill up is 10,000 bottles per hour. The bottles get sent from this factory to... To all over the world and all over Israel. Yaakov is the manager of the, uh, of the bottling plant. You see you have the cardboard box, it slides under mm -hmm. and then it folds it over. It makes the box. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to that machine that wraps it with cling film. And then you see over there you have the storage. Yeah. So obviously we cannot leave Balkan's winery without sampling some of the wine, right? We have a few samples here, mm -hmm. um, a white, a rosé and a red. So the first one will be Segal Rechassim Chardonnay Anoct. Usually Chardonnay in the world goes into oak barrels mm -hmm. almost 100% of the times. So this and one is the stainless so, steel? So this one is sort of an, like a new world adaptation of Chardonnay. It brings out most of the fruits. Alright, let's take a sip. Yeah, right. Cheers. Mmm, it's nice, it's light. So that's the main idea. Yeah. Definitely a summer wine, um, fruity, but yet still complex enough uh, to not be a, a simple. Second one is the rosé, which is from Balkan. It is a pink muscat, Yay, which is an favorite. invention uh, that we made. Look at that pretty color. And yeah, we added a tiny, tiny bit of Petit Verdot, which is a red variety. Cheers, Max. To put your whole face into the glass, oh, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. 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 Tasty, yeah, that is and nice. sweet. 